In this scientific study published earlier this year, researchers investigated the heart rate accuracy of the Apple Watch, Polar Vantage V and Fitbit Sense in a group of 30 men and 30 women. In addition, they also checked if these devices could track how many calories were burned whilst doing exercise. In this video, we will summarize what they found out and we will see which of these devices are accurate and which ones you should steer clear of. I'll also compare the results from this study to my tests of more than 50 watches I've done over the last two years. Now, as always, I do not want to waste your time. So there are timestamps in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now with so many smartwatches on the market and basically all smartwatch manufacturers claiming to have unprecedented accuracy and the latest technology, it's difficult to make an informed choice about which smartwatches are actually reliable, consistent and accurate. To help with that, I recently made an overview video where I compared more than 50 smartwatches for their heart rate accuracy. In that video, we saw that there are big differences between smartwatches and that it also varied between different types of exercises which smartwatches were the most reliable heart rate trackers. However, one big limitation of all my testing is that most of my tests are just performed on one person, myself. It might well be that certain watches perform particularly well or particularly poor on my personal physiology. Which is exactly the reason I got excited when one of my subscribers sent me this scientific study right here. In the study they tested the heart rate accuracy of the Polar Vantage V, the Fitbit Sense and the Apple Watch Series 6, which has the same sensors as the new Series 7. Now, where my testing is mostly limited to just me, in the study, a total of 60 people all performed five different kinds of exercises. Now, this allows us to check how these major brands performed and helps you decide which smartwatch to buy. In the paper, they also describe another really cool test where they tracked the calories burned by each participant and tested if the algorithms used by Polar, Apple and Fitbit can accurately calculate how many calories you burn during exercise. So let's get to it. Now, this video is divided into several parts. I'll first describe how they performed their testing in the study. Second, I'll describe their heart rate results. Third, I will put those results into the context of the tests I've done over the last few years. And finally, we'll take a look at how good these watches are at tracking how many calories you burned. Now, during the scientific study, the 60 participants were told to do five different kinds of indoor activities. Sitting, walking on a treadmill, indoor running, weightlifting, and finally indoor cycling. All of the activities that they did were rather brief, about 10 minutes each, and they followed a very specific schedule as is displayed here. So they started with sitting for 10 minutes, followed by 10 minutes of walking on a treadmill and then running for 10 minutes, after which they rested for five minutes. This was followed by 12 minutes of weightlifting, mostly focusing on the upper body, followed by two minutes of rest and ending in 10 minutes of indoor cycling. Both the running and the cycling were divided into five minutes of lower intensity and five minutes of high intensity workouts. So this study design is looking quite good. However, one thing I'm a bit critical of is how they positioned all the watches during the study. What I understand from the text is that they tested all three watches at the same time on each person. This means that on one arm they had to put two watches and on the other arm they had just one watch. Specifically, they positioned them as follows. On the non-dominant hand, they put the Polar Vantage V one finger behind the wrist, as per Polar's instructions, and then they described that they put the Apple Watch distal to the Vantage V, which, if I understand it correctly, basically means that they effectively put it on top of the wrist. Now, this is not an optimal position for a smartwatch, since it's generally recommended to put the watch a bit higher, as they did for the Vantage V, for instance. However, English is not my mother tongue, so if you have any other interpretation of their text, let us know in the comments below. The Fitbit Sense was placed two fingers behind the wrist bone of the dominant wrist, as per the instructions of Fitbit. So this basically means that the Polar Vantage V and the Fitbit Sense were put in their optimal position as described by the manufacturer, and the Apple Watch Series 6 was in a position that is generally considered suboptimal, so this is something to keep in mind. Now what is really good about the study is that the participants consisted of 30 men and 30 women, so an equal distribution of both. 
All of them were young adults between 18 and 30 years of age, and they were selected to be relatively fit, and none of them were considered obese. So there is definitely still some bias in terms of study population. And I personally think there's one other major limitation in the study, namely the fact that they only included people with a light skin color. Skin color can have quite a big influence on the accuracy of optical heart rate measurements, since it is all based on the transmittance and reflectance of light, which can of course be influenced by the color of the thing you shine the light on. So this is important to keep in mind. As a reference device for measuring heart rate, they use the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which actually measures the electrical activity of the heart. This means that we will assume that the heart rate measurements of the Polar chest strap are correct, and we will compare the heart rate measurements of the watches to this. The Polar H10 is actually very accurate at measuring your heart rate, as we've seen in my testing and has also been shown in another scientific paper. In that paper, a research group showed that the Polar H10 chest strap is likely a better gold standard for testing heart rate during sports than more expensive medical multi-lead ECG devices that are typically used in scientific studies. That study is linked below, and I actually already recorded a video about this, and that should be released soon. Now, let's dive into the results. I will go over each of the five types of activities and show you how the watch is performed. I will start with the activity I expected the watches to be best at and close off with the one I expect to be hardest for a watch to track. Here I display the results for what I think is the easiest type of activity for a watch to track, at least amongst the ones that they studied, which is just sitting in a chair. I will use the average correlation with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap as the metric, which is displayed along the horizontal axis here. And we want that value to be as close to one as possible. On the vertical axis, I ordered the three watches from worst to best. That means that the further to the right and the higher a device is, the higher its correlation with the reference device, so the better its performance. I will abbreviate the Fitbit Sense to just Fitbit, the Polar Vantage V to just Polar, and the Apple Watch Series 6 to just Apple. As you can see, based on their results, the Apple Watch Series 6 and the Polar Vantage V both performed pretty good, though the Apple Watch is still clearly better with a correlation of 0.998 compared to a correlation of 0.990 of the Polar Vantage V. The Fitbit Sense is actually quite bad, showing a correlation of just 0.73. For something as easy as sitting in a chair, this is really not good. The next exercise I want to look at is walking, and those results are displayed here. Now this involves a little more movement, so it's slightly more difficult. As you can see, again, the Apple Watch is best, with a correlation of 0.95. However, now the Fitbit Sense performs better than a Vantage V, which is quite interesting. I honestly expected better results from both, though, since this is still a quite easy exercise to track. Next, let's take a look at cycling indoors, which is a more intensive exercise compared to walking, but it might actually involve less movement, which could make it even easier for a watch to track your heart rate. We indeed see very similar results compared to what we saw for walking, with the Apple Watch performing best, followed by the Fitbit Sense and the Polar Vantage V performing worst. So far, the Apple Watch is clearly outperforming the other watches. However, the activities we've been looking at so far have been relatively easy from a heart rate tracking perspective. So let's now look at two exercises that have generally been more difficult for watches to track. But before getting to that, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off-the-cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would really help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, that's totally up to you. Now, enough self-promotion, let's get back to the video. Let's start with running, in this case running on a treadmill. Surprisingly, this is the first exercise where the Apple Watch did worse than the others. Now, all watches are actually very close to each other, but in this case, the Polar Vantage V is outperforming the Fitbit Sense and the Apple Watch Series 6. So this is actually a bit surprising. However, often an even more difficult exercise for a watch to track is weightlifting because of the strong tension on the arm and on the wrist. And those results are displayed here. In this case, the Apple Watch is again the best with a correlation of 0.98, followed by the Polar Vantage V with a correlation of 0.96. And the Fitbit Sense is now actually the worst in this case with a correlation of 0.88. 
Now, let's take a look at an overview of all of these results combined. And that overview is displayed here. In red, I plotted all the correlations for the Polar Vantage V, in blue, those for the Fitbit Sense, and in green, those for the Apple Watch Series 6. As you can see, overall, the Apple Watch is by far the best. For four out of the five activities, it clearly outperforms all the other watches. Now the performance of the Fitbit Sense is definitely less good, but it seems to perform very similarly for each of the different types of exercises, at least if we judge it purely by correlation. The Polar Vantage V shows more variation between the exercises. It performs quite well for some, but also not so good for others. Overall, the Apple Watch clearly comes out as the winner. However, how does this compare to the results I've shown you based on the tests I've done on myself? Let's take a look. That is displayed here for indoor cycling, and I only included watches with a correlation above 0.7 in this graph. The correlation is again along the horizontal axis, and the more to the top right a device is, the higher its correlation with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. In green, I again marked the Apple Watch Series 6, in blue, the Fitbit Sense, and in red, the Polar Vantage M. Now, I never tested the Vantage V, and the Vantage M is likely the most similar out of all the watches I've tested, and I also tested in a period more similar to when the data of the scientific study was collected. As you can see, based on my testing for indoor cycling, the order of these watches is very similar to what they saw in the study. With the Apple Watch performing best, the Fitbit Sense in the middle, and the Polar Vantage performing worst. If we go back to the results from the study, we indeed see a similar order, with the Polar being the worst and the Apple Watch being the best. Next, if we look at my results for weightlifting, we see that the Apple Watch is again the best, but now the Vantage M is doing better than the Fitbit Sense. The Fitbit Sense does not do very well for weightlifting, as it's on the bottom left right here. Now, if we compare that to the results of the scientific study we were looking at before, we see the same order of watches, with the Apple Watch doing best and the Fitbit Sense doing worst. So it's really interesting to see that the results from the study at least qualitatively look similar to the results I obtained. It really goes to show that there's a big difference in performance of different watches when it comes to heart rate tracking. As we've seen before, the Apple Watch is one of the best heart rate trackers out there, which is again confirmed here. The Polar Vantage V and the Fitbit Sense give mixed results, and which one of these two you should buy really depends on what type of exercise you want to use it for. Of course, Apple Watches only work on iPhones, however based on my testing, the best alternative on Android is the Huawei Watch GT3 series, for instance the GT3 Pro and the GT Runner. However, let's now move from heart rate tracking to something else. Can these watches track how many calories you burn during exercise? To test that, in the study they used the Metamax 3B, which involves wearing a breathing mask that collected some of the air that participants inhaled and exhaled for respiratory analysis. This is used to determine the oxygen uptake and the carbon dioxide that is breathed out, which can be used to determine the metabolic function during exercise. I'm honestly no expert in this type of analysis, but it is said that this is a relatively accurate way of measuring the energy that is expended. Let's see how the watch is performed compared to this reference. That is displayed right here in this table. We have the watches on the left and on top we have the five different types of activities. Now each value here is the difference between how many kilocalories per hour the watch predicted were expended and how much the reference device set was expended. Now just to explain what that means, take running for example. As you can see, all three watches have a negative number there, indicating that they predicted fewer kilocalories per hour burned than the reference. So for instance, we can see right here that the Apple Watch Series 6 predicted just over 100 kilocalories per hour less than the reference. Now taking a look at this table in general, we can see that these values are all over the place, with some clear overestimations, as you can see for instance for the Fitbit Sense while walking, and also some clear underestimations, as you can see for instance for the Fitbit Sense while running. So this is not looking very good, and in the study they therefore conclude that all three devices showed poor accuracy during all activities when it comes to measuring the energy expenditure. This again highlights that we should not just believe whatever manufacturers tell us, but it is important that there is independent testing done to see what health metrics each device can estimate reliably and which ones it cannot estimate at all. This is important for athletes and coaches, but also for nutritionists that might be relying on these metrics. I think that the scientific study that I discuss here is therefore a good example of a helpful study. However, of course the study is not perfect and there are some limitations to their design but also to their analysis. 
First of all, all analyses were done on light skin, relatively fit individuals. This means that we do not know how their results translate to people with a darker skin tone or people with a higher fat percentage. Second, there's always some delay between when research is performed and when it gets published. This means that the watches used in this study are not all the latest models available. Third, they focused on indoor exercises, which is understandable from a practical standpoint, but is also quite a limitation. And finally, in terms of analysis, they did not do a separate analysis for men and women, which would have been interesting to see. This would have been feasible given the data that they have. Still, the study taught us two important things. First of all, as we also saw in my test, the Apple Watch is one of the best heart rate trackers out there and the other models they tested are significantly worse. And two, we see that derived metrics, in this case calories burned, tend to be very different between devices and we can often not rely on these to be accurate. Now, if you wanna buy an Apple Watch, any of these devices or anything at all on Amazon for that matter and support the channel at the same time, there are affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now for people looking for reliable heart rate trackers on Android, the Huawei Watch GT3 series has amazing heart rate tracking and you can find those videos right here. If you want to know more about relatively reliable devices for sleep tracking, check out these videos right here on Fitbits. I'll also link the recent reviews I did on Garmin watches right here. Now I hope that this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.